Thank you for watching Scary Animal Attacks. If you like this episode, please remember to hit the like button and leave a comment or two. Then subscribe and click on the bell to receive notifications whenever we release new episodes. Welcome back to Scary Animal Attacks. Today's episode takes us to the lush green forest of the Mato Grosso on the western edge of southern Brazil. The northern part of the state is the furthest edge of the Amazon rainforest. As you go south, the area is rich in agriculture and cattle ranching, but was reclaimed from the rainforests. In order to farm this area, the forest had to be slashed and burned. Afterward, crops can be grown there, but the destruction of forests doesn't mean the occupants of the forest accept the change in purpose from their human neighbors. In this area, you will find broad savannas similar to those in parts of Africa. There are gallery forests that intrude into the savanna, which act as strongholds for forest dwellers, including tapirs, peccaries, capybaras, caiman, deer, and anacondas. This area is known as the Pantanal and is the world's largest wetland, covering parts of Brazil, Paraguay, and Bolivia. This foliage gives many animals cover from predators, but there is a particularly stealthy predator that has stalked prey here for untold millennia. In the Pantanal, there was a huge male jaguar who had killed between 300 and 400 cattle from local ranchers. He was a mystery to hunters, farmers, ranchers, and vaqueros alike who undertook the deadly pursuit to kill the cat. They would ride their horses through the tall grass, following their baying hounds, but the jaguar always seemed to melt into the landscape like a ghost. Alexander Sasha Zemelis was born on January 25th in 1880 in the capital city of Riga, Latvia. When he was 17 years old, he felt the yearning of adventure and wanderlust common in young people. He immigrated to the United States in 1907, but wasn't satisfied with the lifestyle of working in factories and manufacturing plants. He wanted something with more freedom and adventure. He had heard of the newly emerged countries in South America and the need for brave men to help tame the animals and the land. In 1914, 34-year-old Sasha traveled to the deep jungle of Brazil, gaining employment as a gunsmith and a mechanic at the diamond mines in the state of Mato Grosso. He had an amazing ability to learn anything and used his ability to speak English, Spanish, Portuguese, and Latvian languages to find work, primarily with his hands. As he spent his days repairing the mine's vehicles and repairing guns for local hunters, he became acquainted with a local member of the Huato native tribe. This man was educated in the ancient traditions of the Tigrero, which is a special bounty hunter who preferred to hunt with the classic weapons of the bow and arrow, among others. Their preferred hunting tool for larger and dangerous game was a seven-foot-long spear called a zagia. This spear was used in much the same way ancient Neanderthals used their spears. It wasn't thrown at its target. Rather, it was to be thrust into the animal at close range and used to pin the animal in one place until death. The tip of the spear was typically sharpened metal, and the butt of the spear was placed against the shoulder to add force to its thrust at times. The art of using a zagia requires extreme bravery and a nearly foolhardy level of commitment. Once a large animal is speared with a zagia, it is in such close proximity to the hunter that retreat is not an option. Sasha asked the Guato native to teach him the art of being a tigrero and eagerly became the man's understudy. The use of a zagia is not as simple as running up to an animal and poking the spear into a vital area. Jaguars in particular are cunning and anticipate the moves of any threat to them may make. Trying to spear a jaguar requires knowledge of how to use feints to get past their claws, swiping your thrust from their bodies. Once they swipe your spear away from them, they would have a direct path to bite and claw you, so these lessons are crucial to the survival of the tigrero. Sasha picked up the art faster than expected and quickly became a master tegrero. As with most forms of hunting, vast familiarity with the species you're hunting is a requisite. Knowledge like where and when they bed down, hunt, drink, and reproduce are all key information. As soon as he was ready, Sasha began guiding hunters into the forest and wetland seeking trophies and adventure. His clientele were mostly pursuing jaguar, and he developed this practice into his specialty. Given that jaguars were turning surrounding ranches into their hunting grounds, his services served a dual purpose. They kept the cats away from the ranches or removed the jaguars who would not comply, and they provided the adventure and excitement trophy hunters of the time would gladly pay for. He is tied to personally killing over 300 jaguars, and most of those with the zagia as his preferred tool of death. It is about this point that Sasha's story takes a particularly interesting turn. He had received complaints about a huge male jaguar from ranchers and farmers. 
This giant cat was raiding livestock and was blamed for somewhere between three and 400 cattle deaths alone. The large paw prints would give the giant male cat away every time at a kill, but somehow would never lead hunters to his location. He was a master of disappearing in the mist and grass of the Pantanal as mysteriously as he had appeared. The giant jaguar had attracted a lot of attention from area bounty hunters. They would pursue him into the Pantanal on horseback using dogs to follow his trail. The jaguar developed a reliable strategy to deal with the hunting dogs. As it was pursued, the cat would run a route and end it with a large circular trail, leading it to near where it had just ran past. This would bring it in close proximity to its pursuers who were following its trail. Once they ran past his location, the jaguar would spring from cover and kill the dogs, one by one. As the hunter continued to follow the pursuit, the cat frequently performed a similar trick on them and killed many of its human and canine pursuers. This jaguar was so successful in its ability to ambush and kill its own pursuers that many local tigreros refused to pursue him. He had garnered a mythos around him and earned the name Assassino from local farmers and ranchers. His name means the assassin and embodies how the locals feared and respected the jaguar. After killing so many of his pursuers, Assassino would make one fatal mistake and draw the attention of Sasha in a very violent way. After his pleas for a tigrero to kill Assassino went unanswered, a farmer and friend of Sasha's, Jose Ramos, decided to deal with the cat himself. He saddled his horse and gathered his hounds. They cut a trail up the hills above his ranch and found the giant tracks of Assassino. It had returned to one of the rancher's animals it had killed, and they were sure he would be back for more. As the dogs bayed in excitement, Jose examined the tracks and tried to discern what the cat would do. He had no idea he and his dogs were in for a fatal confrontation with Assassino. As Ramos' horse pushed its way through the grass, his dogs ran ahead and followed Assassino's scent trail. As the dogs outpaced the horse and his rider, their baying faded and distorted as they ran over hills and through vegetation. Ramos gently spurred his horse to encourage it to keep up with the pace. Little did Ramos know, up ahead, the dogs had strung out, with the fastest and most aggressive dog taking the lead. Assassino had run through swamps and across pockets of grass and forests, trying to shake the dogs, but they continued to follow him. As the fastest hound gained on him, Assassino veered to the right in a broad turn. He laid up over his own trail, waiting for the hounds who were following him. Just then, the lead hound dashed in front of him, and he was on it before it could find cover. His canines pierced its skull just above the neck, rendering the dog dead in only a few seconds. It wasn't but a few more seconds, and the rest of the pack would be nearing his hiding spot, so he crept quietly away, leaving the dog's carcass where it lay. As each of the pack of five dogs narrowed the distance between themselves and the jaguar, Assassino would perform the same loop and observe his back trail. He ambushed every dog Ramos had in his pack, but wasn't finished. Ramos was pursuing Assassino on horse with a muzzle loader. If you know anything about muzzle loaders, they are very time intensive to reload once you fire. Doing it on horseback does not seem to speed this process up at all. As Ramos followed the baying pack, he could hear them getting further away and turned to tracking them by sign. He would look for bent grass with tracks going through it and move along that way. As he approached the scene of the first ambush on his hounds, he likely thought they had treed or cornered Assassino and he had killed one of them in a struggle. He flicked his reins and urged his horse to hurry in the direction the tracks continued to lead. It wasn't long before he came upon another one of his hounds, dead, then another, and a fourth. He knew he had only one hound still pursuing Assassino, but couldn't hear it. The last hound was laying dead, only about twenty yards ahead of him, concealed by the tall grass. Assassino had just killed him and was now circling back behind Ramos through the thick grass. As Ramos scanned the grass for any signs of direction he and his horse should go, Assassino leapt from the tall grass only about twelve feet behind him. The jaguar dug its claws into the man's shoulders as the two tumbled from atop the horse, now frightened and rearing. As the pair hit the ground with a thud, Assassino closed his jaws quickly on the back of the neck, driving his powerful canines through Ramos's skull and killing him. Sasha heard of the tragedy involving Ramos and his hounds. He decided that he could no longer hope someone else would kill this jaguar. Assassino had made this personal for him, and now he had to execute a hunt based on the traditions of his Wato native mentor. He grabbed his bow and quiver of arrows along with his zagya and rounded up his hounds. Sasha and his hounds quickly searched out and found the trail of Ramos's dead hounds, which led to his corpse. Sasha knew the cat would be nearby and perhaps he had been following them, aware already of his intent. 
Sasha's hounds continued to bay as he let them go, and they dashed into the brush after cutting Asasino's fresh tracks. Again, Asasino executed his circular ambush of Sasha's hounds just like it did to Ramos's hounds. One by one, Sasha's hounds were ambushed and killed as they pursued the jaguar. Sasha managed to grab the collar of his last hound, Pardo, and held on to him as he followed the trail. Surrounded by tall grass and still grasping Pardo's collar, Sasha then did something that only the most experienced Tigrero would do. He deliberately put his knee down on his dog's tail, making him yelp out in pain. The trick worked as Sasha saw a flash in the grass right in front of him. He could make out the outline of the jaguar nearly perfectly hidden in the grass. Sasha knocked an arrow he pulled from his quiver and gauged the area where he thought the cat's shoulder would be. He released the arrow and watched it flex its way along its path toward Asasino. The arrow found its mark and plunged deep into the cat's flesh. Now enraged, having had the tables turned on him, Asasino screamed and lunged from the cover. Sasha could see the teeth bared and claws extended from Asasino's paws held wide to clamp onto the man's flesh. As he released the arrow, Sasha immediately dropped his bow and picked up his zagya. The jaguar was upon him nearly too fast for the tegrero. He had just enough time to point the zagya toward the jaguar and feint with it to distract its defensive swats from its claws. The sharp point hit home and plunged deep into the chest of the enraged jaguar. The impact of Asasino onto the tip of the spear drove Sasha backward and onto his back. Sasha quickly regained his footing and pushed the spear into Asasino's chest even deeper, clear to the hilt of the blade. As the jaguar tried to push past the spear to kill Sasha, the man worked the embedded blade back and forth to cut as much tissue as he could. Sasha knew he had to cut something major and hoped to sever a major artery or vein to make the jaguar bleed out. This is not a fast process and can take a very long time, but it is part of this primitive, personal, and dangerous hunting technique. Just the kind of confrontation a predator of this status demands. As the struggle with Asasino continued, Sasha placed the butt of the spear into his armpit. The cat lifted him up off the ground as it tried to work the spear from its chest. It twisted and clawed at the spear shaft and again lifted Sasha off the ground. As the two pushed and pulled at each other, Asasino lifted the man off the ground again and again, but Sasha continually landed on his feet each time. This struggle went on for around 30 minutes before Asasino succumbed to his arrow and spear wounds. As the jaguar faded and slowly lay still at the man's feet, Sasha was exhausted and paused for a few moments to catch his breath and energy. After he collected his thoughts, Sasha began to examine his latest trophy. Asasino was enormous. His carcass stretched to over ten feet long. The muscles of his neck and shoulders rippled, even in death. The girth and thickness of the cat's forearms amazed the hunter. Sasha had brought to an end the reign of terror and mayhem that Asasino had wrought on the local communities. It wasn't long before Sasha lost his Watto mentor to another jaguar. Sasha decided from that point on he would never hunt alone again, and he didn't. A few years after the passing of his friend and mentor, Sasha returned to the United States. Sasha wrote articles about his exploit and was published in magazines like National Geographic. His exploits were the subject of a biography titled Green Hell. This book recalled the author's trip through the Pantanal, guided on a jaguar hunt by Sasha. This launched a national curiosity into the feats of his life. Sasha traveled to Philadelphia on a speaking tour where he met the love of his life, Edith, who bore their four children. He wrote several more books detailing his and his new wife's adventures in the Pantanal. It wasn't long before fame came calling and Sasha landed an acting gig on an adventure series called Jungle Menace as Tiger Van Dorn. The series was eventually compiled into a feature film, debuting in 1946 under the title Jungle Terror. Together with Edith, Sasha and his family purchased a farm in rural Pennsylvania, naming their farm Balm Retiro. There, he and Edith would live out the rest of their lives, returning to the Pantanal when their youngest son was 13. His adventures are recounted in the book named after him, called Sashino. Eventually a museum of his artifacts, which included his trophies, artwork, minerals, shells, and coins, as well as native weapons and utensils, was established in 1963 at Perkyoman Creek, Pennsylvania. It was aptly named the Sasha Simel. Thank you for watching Scary Animal Attacks. If you like this video, please consider hitting that like button and clicking on the bell icon to keep you notified of our latest video releases. Sharing our video links on your social media might help save a life and spread the fun. 
As a member of our human network, be careful out there because you don't want to end up on an episode of Scary Animal Attacks.